us this morning. Wonderful to see all of you this morning as we enter into a very special time of the church year, a preparatory period for Great Holy Lemon, just a few weeks away, called the Priodium. The name comes from a book that includes the hymns of Great Lenten Holy Week. And this Theodion period, again, prepares us for Great Lenten, much like spring training prepares baseball players for their season, so that they don't just start the season and have an increased chance of getting injured and then not succeeding to fulfill their goal. Our goal, Great Lenten's goal for us, is that we grow closer to God that we have that relationship strengthened, that we experience more profoundly and fully God's presence and His peace and joy. This is the purpose of great holy Lent. But we have to prepare because it's a long journey and there are pitfalls along the way. And so we must be ready for what's to come. And this Sunday, that is called the Sunday of the Public and Pharisee, Offers a very important insight before we begin great Lent. And that, of course, is not to judge, not to judge others. This is a very essential spiritual trait if you're a follower of the Lord. And especially during great Lent, where we're going to be fasting quite a bit more than we normally do, praying more than we normally do, going to church probably more than we normally do. And, and yet, all those things don't matter if we judge someone. Because that's what we heard the Pharisees say, I fast all the time. I fast so I sit, I tithe, he gave 10% of his earnings back to the temple. He obviously was a, a man who went to the temple frequently. And yet, because he judged and looked down on the tax collector and others who were, are called sinners, the Lord rebukes him. And actually, he is far from God, as we will see. Because we hear that he was praying thus to himself, the gospel says. He wasn't really praying to God. He was, there was no real relationship with God. Because of his pride. And because his heart was so the same and disgust for this gospel. And for other sinners. And so he really didn't have much of a relation with God, if at all. As the scripture says, he's just praying with himself. And we are going through great land, and we are told, as much as we fast and do charity and charitable things, and come to church more, if we judge others, none of it really matters. That's kind of a crazy thing to think of. But that's how important <laughs> not judging others is. And so it's a warning for us as we enter Lent not to get prideful. Look at all that I'm doing. Look how wonderful I am. Because then we've lost our perspective. Then we, we've totally missed the point of great Lent, which is to change our hearts and to soften our hearts and to fill it with the love and the light of God. So to judge my brothers and sisters, somebody else, like the Pharisee did, that the heart of the Pharisee which we're trying to avoid is to have disdain for somebody or disgust for somebody else because of anything, whether they're sinners and have done things that are contradictions of God, are selfish, ungrateful, whether they even just disagree with us, whether they uh, are on the opposite side of the political spectrum from us, or are somebody we can't stand political leadership. And I have to say, I've seen and heard Orthodox Christians have such a disdain and disgust towards others because of their views being opposite or a different faith. These people are this faith, uh, or have this lifestyle, and there is such disgust and disdain that comes from their hearts. And this is having the heart of theirs. And this is what is going to keep us away from the Lord if we have this kind of a heart and this kind of judgmental spirit. It's important to know what uh, 
not judging does, does not mean. So when we're called not to judge somebody, it doesn't mean that we don't correct them if we need to, or have that tough conversation, or that we can't disagree. We can disagree with somebody, of course, uh, with their stances, with their views, with their beliefs. It just means that we shouldn't have, again, this disdain and judgmental heart and a disgust with them. That's what it means, as we disagree with them and correct them. And as St. John Chrysostom says, and perhaps one way to help us have it much more, the heart of the tax collector, a heart of love, Chrysostom says, no one can feel hatred towards those for whom he prays for. How many of those people that we disagree with, that we can't stand because of their views and their lifestyles or their beliefs, how many of those people do we pray for? Because if we don't, we're doing something wrong. And our hearts will never be the heart of the tax collector, but also the heart of the saints and the heart of Jesus Christ. Because the saints and the Lord love and love the sinner, does not agree with the sin, but never stops loving the sinner. And believes that the sinner is not evil or bad. But if anything is spiritually lost, or broken, or dead, but not forever evil, but wounded, and prays for them for their healing. This is to have the heart of Christ and of the saints. And we shouldn't judge like the Pharisee, my brothers and sisters, because not only does it impact our relation with God, as we see, because pride pushes God away, but also it contributes to the negativity and toxicity that currently exists in our society. This is the problem. It's not what party you're from. It's not what beliefs you have. It's that the same and disgust and judgment exists in our hearts. That is the problem. Until we clear that up and purify it, we will continue to emanate this negativity in our already divisive and fractured society. So we're called to be like this tax collector. To admit that we have our own issues and our own brokenness because by doing so, it's not judging others is very, very difficult as we all know. It's so easy to judge somebody else. And one way to completely change that is for us, again, to realize and admit I've got my own issues. I've got my own problems. I've got my own sin. And anyone that says they don't has to do a little more introspection. Not for the purpose, though, of beating ourselves up. Because that is not what the church wants to do when we repent. But to admit our shortcomings and sins for the purpose of healing our souls for the purpose of being raised up and also to give it to Christ. It's not just that we admit it and say, oh, look, I'm imperfect like all these issues, but it's to do what the tax collector did and said, and Lord have mercy on me. It's giving that brokenness to a loving and compassionate Lord. And the irony is that people don't do that because they think they're going to be punished, they think God hates them, and they think they're, they don't belong in this church. And that could be further from the truth. Because the reality is, when we admit our brokenness and our sins before God, He will never shun us and never turn us away. If we're sincere, it's not a game. Oh, sin, no, God. It's not a game. But if we're sincere and truly repentant, as Psalm 50 says, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. You will not turn away. 
That's the word of Scripture. And also I want to point you to a beautiful uh, section of one of the three communion prayers of St. Stephen the Theologian who says, I know, Savior, that no one has offended you as I have, nor committed the deeds that I have done. But this again I know, that neither the greatness of my sins nor the multitude of my transgressions exceed my, my God's great forbearance and his great love for all. And so Christ embraces us when we come to him in our humility, in our brokenness, always. And when we understand this, we truly experience his mercy and love and his embrace. And we're going to hear more of that next Sunday with the parable of the prodigal son and the, the father who represents that. But if we have this kind of a spirit and heart of the tax collector and make our shortcomings before God, that also has absolutely implications for how we view other people. Because the more we're understanding of our own issues and yet God's mercy and forgiveness for us, then we see people in a much more positive light, a much more forgiving light, a much more compassionate light, a much more merciful light. We're less inclined and quick to judge and condemn and be harsh because we know our own issues and how much we have failed in the sight of God and how merciful God is with us. And so we're more generous and we see much, others in much more positive light. Other than the, the flip side is the Pharisee was so proudful that he looked down on others because he did it in his brokenness. And so it's just a negative, disdainful view of other people. And my brothers and sisters, also, not judging others, it's not just for the other people, for others, but it's as much for us. Because we experience more of God's peace and joy when we can remove that toxic judgment of others from our hearts. And so there's a great benefit to us, as difficult as it might be. And how important is not judging others? I just want to also share this story of a saint who's commemorated on March 30th. Some of you may know this. And this saint, we don't know his name. It's an unnamed monk. He has no name. We don't know his name. But you can look him up on March 30th. And he's a saint. And you'll hear why. He was lazy. He was undisciplined in prayer as well as other aspects of life. Due to this, his brother monks were surprised at the monk's joy as he lay on his deathbed and asked him the reason for his joy. And the monk said, I have just seen the angels and they showed me a page with all my many sins. I said to them, the Lord said, judge not that you not be judged. I have never judged anyone, and I hope in the mercy of God that he will not judge me. And the angels tore up the sheet of paper with his sins. Hearing this, the monks wondered at it and learned from it. How powerful and how judging it is, is that the angels of God will be willing to almost look, look, overlook any other thing. That's how powerful and judging it is and how impactful it is for our soul and our salvation. And we will never be perfect at it like this monk. There's a reason he's in here, because it's almost unheard of that someone can do exactly what he did. But to be encouraged, to realize too that to, to still do what Pharisee did in the fast and the coming to church doesn't mean we stop doing those things. Because those things are spiritually important for our lives and for our relationship with God, but just also to make sure that it is to swell our heads and our hearts and that we look down at others. So that, my brothers and sisters, our Lenten journey will bear fruit and that we will experience more profoundly the peace and the presence and the joy of our Lord. Amen.